Hello and welcome to the first installment of 30 Days of Clone Add-ons. It is an experiment in um, video logging and combining that with reviewing products in the Clone Software Center. Every day for the next 30 days leading up to the Brazil conference, I will be reviewing a new clone product um, that has been added to the Clone Product Software Center and going through the ins and outs, what it means to decision makers and integrators alike, and how to install if there are any weird things going on there, and in addition, what it actually looks like, since this tends to be a problem with the current way that our products are documented. The first product that I'm going to be going over is Plume Theme Diazo Underbar Responsive Theme. Now, this is obvious to any decision maker that this is a uh, responsive theme based on Diazo for Plume add-ons. I realize not everybody is familiar with what responsive theming is, so let me take a quick side note here and talk about what that means. This is the University of Notre Dame site, which I just happen to know is responsive and I often use when I'm selling to my own clients uh, as to why you should have a responsive theme. You can see here that the site is well set up for a very large screen. Um, I, am, I am working on a 48 inch diagonal screen here, so it's very nice, takes up lots of room, and it has lots of room for all these headers. However, we all know that we all have iPads, um, iOS apps, Android apps, things like that, that we sit on the subway and we read them for the news and we sit and while we're doing our laundry or even when we're just trying to ignore the person across from us at the table because they aren't saying anything interesting. We have a couple options as decision makers and integrators on how we can address the mobile problem, which actually might not even be mobile. It might be somebody just sitting on their couch reading the news on their iPad because they prefer that format. You can have a website, and then you can also have iOS apps, Android apps, and I even had somebody request once that we supported BlackBerry. So there, there's a lot of requests that come across, and you can actually spend the money, and you can basically redo key functionality in each one of these things, which can be quite expensive. One popular option that has come up lately is what's called responsive design, and that's the notion that you can take a website like this, and you can look at it in this big format on my laptop, and it looks very nice and it's, it's designed as it's meant to be, but also that you can squeeze it down and look at it on a mobile phone and it actually makes sense. So here I have taken this format and I have squeezed it down to as small as my browser will let me go and you can see what this would look like to somebody on a mobile phone. You can see that we have now a specifically a link to a mobile site. Uh, we have menu which operates in a very different way which has taken that whole top menu and collapsed it down and we have different search things which come and actually collapse the search. So this is very, very convenient because um, even though it might not get you out of um, or off the hook of developing an Android app or an iOS app, it will at least buy you lots of time to raise money um, and beg them not to make you do it. Historically, Clone focused on flowing layouts. This means that it, the Clone theme outside of the box can expand and contract and things will flow over to the bottom just like they did here um, and, and can be visible on most things. However, you can already see that things kind of starting to look a little funky once you get up here and things are collapsing weird. This is something that especially affects people when they have lots and lots of links at the top and different things happening. Um, we don't have this nice collapsing menu action, which I'll show you again here at the top, which takes this website from having lots of things down to focusing people on the basics of what they need. This is one of the hard things about doing mobile design. Uh, you have to choose what you think is important to your user and what should be shown and what shouldn't be shown based on what kind of content you're delivering and how people use devices. For example, it's not going to be very common that people are editing content in Clone on their mobile phone, but it's much more likely that they're going to be reading. So how do you optimize content for that? This is a question that Clone Theme Diazo Responsive Theme uh, tries to answer. Uh, let's go through the install of this really quick and see what it actually looks like. Let's take a quick minute and go over how we actually would install this. I'm using the, the Plone 432 um, core build-out environment. This is the development environment, but if you use any of the installers, you should have something that's almost exactly the same. There are many tutorials on operating system-specific installation instructions for Plone add-ons, so I'm going to briefly go over them and kind of just give you a little bit of an overview. You can see here in my instance, I have added a line called Plone theme.diazo underbar responsive theme. I'm going to come over to my other screen here. I'm going to shut down the server that was already running, and I'm going to rerun build app. This is a standard way to install um, a new clone package. You can see here that build app has just finished running, 
and has chosen clone theme that the as a responsive theme as an egg to be added to our Python path. This means that everything went correctly and that I'm ready to actually start up the service again in foreground mode. If you're using one of the installers, you can just restart on the installer instead of going from the command line. However, if you're on Mac or Linux, I definitely recommend operating in foreground mode so that you can see any errors as they actually happen. So now we see we're ready to handle requests. I'm going to create a new clone site for every add-on I try to test to make sure that we don't have any conflicts or any weird product leftovers. I'm sure that at some point this will get old and I'll just start mixing them, but for now, let's actually do the proper thing. If you have a clone site already, you can find these in the install products panel once you've restarted. But because I'm creating a new clone site, I'm just going to click Diazo theme support in Diazo theme dash port of collective dot responsive theme theme. So let's create this clone site and see where we get from here. All right, we have a new clone site. It doesn't look exactly the same as it actually is. Um, so let's actually go and see how we configure this. In the admin panel, click site setup, and then we're going to go on to themes. For those of you that aren't familiar with the D new Diazo theming tools, I highly encourage you to download and, and check them out. They offer a lot of different flexibilities that the original clone theming did not. For example, we have a nice interface for activating and deactivating themes, um, and they can be changed and uploaded by zip file. I will place the links underneath the video for those that want more information on why they should use Diazo versus traditional clone theming. We can see here that the Diazo responsive theme has been activated. Um, so let's go see what happens. If I come back to the main page of Plone, I'm anticipating that I can squeeze it and something's going to happen, something's going to happen to the menu, and it actually looks exactly like Plone looks all the time, which is kind of weird. This is kind of the first gotcha with the way that Diazo is working and, and the defaults. So I'm going to come back here and click on Event Settings, and what we're going to go to is Unthemed Host Names. And we can see that we have my default address on here. And I just happen to use 127.0.0.1 instead of localhost to access my site. So let's actually remove this and save this so that we can actually activate the theme for my website on my development instance. I'm going to come back to the home page. I'm going to squeeze things out. And I'm going to see that the top navigation actually does collapse. And we have a new search bar. And things are looking much nicer um, from a mobile perspective. Now, I don't think that this is meant to be deployable to your end customer without some sort of customization. And in fact, I think that this should be a base for a theme that you're working with. It's a very simple customization, and I've actually poked around here quite a bit and haven't seen many other details besides the fact that the top bar collapses. It would be really nice if the authors would update and say what else it actually did besides doing these things. Otherwise, I'm just kind of like poking around trying to say like, well, if I do it this way, is it going to give me a different um, perspective than if another way? Um, honestly, that's really the only thing I can see that's quite different. Now, this is good if you are trying to pull something straight out of the box and do a quick Im implementation, but any custom implementation, and I think you're, that this project is probably not for you. The responsive media queries that change this top bar aren't actually that difficult, and any mediocre developer can actually make this happen for you. I'm not saying that this product is mediocre, but just saying that if you're going to do a large implementation or something extremely custom, you might actually want to bypass on this product, use it as an example on how you should be doing media queries, and move on to doing exactly what your customer needs. And with that, I can say that plugtheme.diazo under bar responsive theme gives a hearty meh from me. This is a great tool for people who don't actually want to touch clone and who are willing to get into build out just to add um, a little tiny bit of functionality. However, any big project is actually going to want to customize that menu themselves, specifically to make sure that their user is going to do exactly what they want to do.